Good afternoon, everyone. Hi, I'm David Callan, President of the Museum. Welcome back to Lunch and Learn. I'm joined by Executive Committee member Brad Kopp in the audience today, and I want to acknowledge that from the Museum's Board of Trustees. Now, our speaker today is John Sedgwick, and he has uh, he is the author of 11 books and 500 magazine publications in a wide variety of magazines like Vanity Fair, Esquire, GQ, Newsweek, uh, and Atlantic Monthly. Now, he's covered the gamut of of topics and individuals as far ranging of individuals like George W. Bush all the way through to Mike Tyson. And now he turns his attention to Alexander Hamilton and Aaron Burr. Very timely of course as uh, Hamiltonia has swept this city with the show uh, on Broadway and for the Hamiltonians in the crowd, yesterday was the 235th anniversary of Alexander Hamilton's wedding to Betsy Schuyler. Now today we're here about John's recent book, War of Two, about Hamilton and Burr. It will be on sale afterwards and John will be happy to autograph it for you, uh, so please take advantage of that. Now you're going to find out that there's a direct connection between a Sedgwick ancestor and that duel. I'm sure you'll uh, talk about that in, in your remarks, so without further ado, John Sedgwick. That's great. Um, yeah, I think I might mention that. The, um, I, I want to say also that I've never been in the midst of so many Wall Street tycoons uh, um, in all my days. This is a thrill for me. And um, it's also remarkable to think that um, there was a time in about 200 years ago when um, Alexander Hamilton lived not too far from here, and then about a few blocks down Wall Street, Aaron Burr lived. And this was like a little neighborhood, and it's changed today, I recognize. But uh, um, but I'm always, and then Federal Hall is right here. I mean, the, the concentration of power and intrigue in this city. I mean, this was at a time when, you have to remember that up past um, Greenwich Village, it was countryside. There were bears in those hills. Uh, um, and there were lobster in in New York Harbor. Uh, um, it was it was a rustic place. It was a little village in the wilderness, uh, um, and people don't recognize that. Anyway, it's nice to be here in this village, in this wilderness right now. Uh, and uh, let me just start by saying that, uh, um, as Dave was alluding, uh, that almost a decade ago, when I was researching my book In My Blood on six generations of my family, I came off into a wonderful archive up in Boston, perhaps you know it, called the Massachusetts. Massachusetts Historical Society, where so many of my family's papers are collected. And it was there that I made an unexpected discovery that led to this book, War of Two. One afternoon, the head librarian there, Peter Drummy, told me some, he had something to show me. We've got this one display up front, he said. It would, you have to be quiet in the library. Uh, um, Come, you should see it. So he beckoned me uh, through a series of rooms to an exhibition space showing the society's prized holdings uh, uh, in a long glass case. Peter stopped beside one of them and pointed towards a, a wrinkled letter, yellowed with age, its once black ink long since faded to brown. There. Take a look. I bent over the case. New York, July 10, 1804, I read out. My dear sir, I have received two letters from you since we last saw each other. That of the latest date being the 24 of May. I have had in hand for some time a long letter to you explaining my view of the course and tendency of our politics and my intentions as to my own future conduct. But my plan embraced so large a range that owing to much avocation, some indifferent health, and a growing distaste for politics, the letter is still considerably short of being finished. I write this now to satisfy you that want of regard for you has not been the cause of my silence. Who writes like that? <laughs> Wait, th this isn't, I asked. Peter nodded, yes. Alexander Hamilton's last letter, written the night before he was shot by the sitting Vice President Aaron Burr, needless to say, in the famous duel in we at Weehawk in New Jersey in 1804, an event that Henry Adams called the most dramatic moment in the politics of the early republic. And look, it's to one of yours, Peter said, his good friend and legislative ally, Theodore Sedgwick. Of course, the name was scrawled hastily across the top. 
I'd known about the letter, but I'd never seen it. Theodore was my great-great-grandfather, a lawyer and politician. He was the founder of our branch of the Sedgwick family, had built a fine federal-style house in the Berkshires that is still owned by the family, all of its descendants. It had built a fine, uh, um, and, it near, and it, he had nearly been killed in the Shays' Rebellion that took him as a rich, plump lawyer as one of its more detestable targets. He'd helped push Hamilton's economic agenda through the House when he was a representative from Massachusetts and ultimately rose to become Speaker of the House for that fateful election of 1800 that wrested control away from his Federalist Party and turned it over to Thomas Jefferson and the Republican Jacobins, as he thought of them. Much to Hamilton's distress, Theodore had tried fruitlessly to steer the election to Burr a friend from the Berkshires, where Burr's guardian, Uncle Timothy Edwards, had gone to live. Theodore had been one of the only politicians who'd remained a trusted friend of both, of both men, which is why Hamilton was writing him now. We'll, turn, we'll return to that letter later in its time. Taken out of context, it may seem tangential and unusually for Hamilton, wildly overblown. It is likely to defy expectations as to why Hamilton crossed the Hudson at daybreak and faced his doom. In a few choice sentences, Hamilton offered a better explanation about his part in the duel and a better prediction of what would come of it than any other single document. <laughs>